ain't going to get you into heaven. Your church ain't going to get you into heaven. You take the blood of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, if this ain't okay, you just ain't get up and go home because I ain't changing. Oh, I'm going to let God have his way. Praise God. We need to have God's integrity and his honesty about us, brothers and sisters, so that people will want to give their heart to Christ Jesus. Oh man, I made a change in my life. Don't you just don't understand? I do understand because I made a change in my life, and then I fell flat on my face, brothers and sisters. Amen. And the preachers that ordained me pushed me out there and said, "All of the one said, get out there and preach, and it'll all be okay." And I got out and I walked on the plank, and they pushed me overboard. Come on, bro. That's what people do to you. The church loves me as long as I pretty much preach what they want. I don't reckon I'm ever going to preach what you want me to preach. Amen. So I might have to pack up and leave them. I don't know. But I'm going to preach what God said. Let me tell you something. It's time we stand up behind this thing. We're accountable for you this morning, church. I'm accountable for what I bring forth to you this morning. Right. The blood of Jesus Christ wants to cleanse you this morning. He wants to make you new. He wants to give you a fresh start in life. Amen. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm not about talking about speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about being healed. I'm not talking about being healed from any dynamic spirit. I'm talking about being saved under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here, I'm going to tear that page out of the Bible. It talks about speaking in tongues, about getting healed, about getting delivered. Because most people don't even want to believe it. Don't even believe it. Most Christians don't even believe it anymore. They've been told by so many people that the Bible, that part of the Bible is a lie. Look at verse 2 again. How is your integrity in Christ Jesus? How is your lifestyle? Your lifestyle is exactly what you made it be. Your home life is exactly what you made it be. Your work life is exactly what you made it be. That's right. Your family looks at you exactly the way that you made them look at you. Paul said to them, Receive us. We have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, and we have defrauded no man. Paul was just like a lot, of, a lot of the evangelists and other ministers that went out in the highways and the byways. There was a lot of times, brothers and sisters, that the finances for Brother Paul and well-being didn't come to him. Amen. And he'd have to walk from town to town to town. Amen. And sometimes there wasn't no provision for him. But he didn't quit on Christ Jesus. He didn't quit on the gospel. He kept going. Amen. Y'all do not, okay? But most churches want to starve preachers to death. They want to control them. They want to hold them down to this, amen? Same thing in the workplace, brothers and sisters. Your boss wants to keep you at a certain level, amen? Because he wants to control you, and he knows he's got to pay you this much money to get that job done, but he don't want you to be any more than what he's got you being. That's how the devil does in church. He don't want you, Christian, to do any more than you've been doing in church. And the devil's winning in some of the Christians' lives. The light's on the inside, but it can't get outside. The light shines on the inside, but the blinders have been pulled where the light can come forth. Paul's telling them, receive us. We ain't done anything wrong. Amen? There's always somebody going to judge you. There's always somebody going to examine you. And there's always a lot of them going to condemn you. But if you have the integrity of Christ Jesus in your heart, you'll walk through that and you'll come out victorious. Amen? He said, I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Amen? Paul's telling them, look here, buddy. I'm giving you all I got towards you. I'm giving you everything that I've got in God. Amen? Great, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. He said, I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulations. Woo! Come on. I'll rejoice.
Joel said that. Well, you won't turn it Oh, pray that he said, I am exceedingly joyful in all our, not my, not yours, but our tribulations. Amen. I am going to rejoice in the Lord regardless of the tribulations that come forth. There'll be some people sitting in the church and you'll never get them to say amen or praise the Lord or pray or anything else. We must learn that's not acceptable, but we can't make them people. This is not a church where we're going to say, Lord told me to tell you to get up here, I'm going to pray for you. If the Spirit of God can't bring you out of that pew, it ain't worth getting up. That's right. Come on, bro. There'll be preachers come in. Some of them may be anointed to do that. I don't know. I feel like the Spirit of God needs to do it. Man. Brother and sister, we've been together over a year. I don't know, about a year or four months. Go with me, I don't know. Somewhere right around there. I've seen growth. I've seen, I've seen carnal growth, and I've seen spiritual growth. But what I haven't seen that's totally unacceptable is someone having their life changed. Now, I don't know if you ever change your life when we prayed at the end of the service or not. That's, I'm not God. I, I'm not God. I can't judge you for that. Amen? But if you did, praise God. But if you did, the world needs to know it. Your brothers and sisters need to see it. Amen. How do I know you're saved or blessed or whatever if I never see you show any expression of God? Right. No, no showing forth of the love of God. Amen. Let me tell you something, brother. I probably have to, it'd be worse than going to the dentist without knowing we can't have a tooth pulled to get this side of the church to shake hands with this side of the church and mean it. Amen. And mean it. I don't like so and so over there. I don't like this one over here. Well, this one does that. Then you they, they should have been done. Isn't that me? It's a body of Christ. Many members in one body. Amen. Amen. We don't own the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God dwelleth on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen George. Praise God. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulations. Let me tell you something. We've done the funeral. Christmas Eve. What the Christmas Eve? Huh? Done the funeral service of the girl that grew up in Morgantown with us. Uh, Janie Auburn. Some of you know her. Uh, I got to do the graveside service. Her pastor from Chattanooga done such an awesome job. The man really touched my heart on the inside by the things that he had said because of her life, how she had changed God will change you no matter what you are. Amen. He'll make you new no matter what you are. Amen. I don't know what you are. Amen. You don't know what I am. But I know who he is this morning. Amen. And I know what he can do for you. Amen. Amen. He said, for when we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Does that sound pretty normal to your walk in Christ Jesus? I know what he's talking about in the book of Corinthians here, but I'm trying to bring it to the illustration to your life this morning. Look here, he said, without were fightings. Kind of fits normal, doesn't it? The humanistic nature. And within were fears. I fear I'm not going to please God. On the outside of me, I war every day. But in my heart, I know I'm one. In my heart, I know where I'm going to spend eternity. In my heart, I know that he has saved me and he bought me with the price of the royal blood. Amen. But in the outward man, my carnal mind, my carnality, and my carnal flesh every day wants to go right back to the world. Guess what? Sometimes we get wins. I know none of you Christians are going to admit that. I've been here long enough to see you. You never going to admit you never see me. But I sin sometimes. I don't will, willingly sin. But I still mess up. 
I still let my flesh man get in control sometimes over my spirit man. Right. Amen. I think as Brother Anthony studies that led by the spirit and we study led by the spirit, we're going to see how we can come out of those sinful natures that dominate us in some little areas of our life, brothers and sisters. Amen. I've got about 10 pages I've been researching in it. And I, I have learned something about George Morgan. I am weak in my flesh, but in my spirit, man, I am so strong in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 But in my flesh, it yearns and it, and it drools at the mouth, if you will. You ever drool? My flesh, man, drools to sin. My flesh, man, longs to sin. My flesh, man, longs to get out into the world and do the things of the world. I know you holy people don't do that. But mine does sometimes. Amen. If you ever want to experience true hurt, you get in church. Amen. And then most Christians use it for an excuse not to go to church. Amen. Oh, me. I've been there too, brother. Do you expect to walk into the church and never face opposition? I may not have ever wronged you. I may not have ever defrauded you or took advantage of you, but one day I might mess up. I hope I never do. But would you forgive me? How many of you have the love of God in your heart? Let me see your hands. If you have the love of Christ in your heart. Amen. Well, tonight, after we get done with church over in Sweetwater, I'm going over to the bar and I'm going to get drunk. And Sunday morning, I'm going to I'm going to preach. Are you going to come here? How many say it's love? Why not? Did God not forgive you when you messed up? See how judgmental we are? Mm. You, come in, you got drunk. Ain't no worse than you looking at that other woman over there wanting her, or that woman looking over at the other man wanting her, him. Same principle, same thing, sin, sin. Amen. But yet you want me to get up and preach to you holiness, but yet you want to go ahead and sin, but it's okay if you sin, but the preacher can't get drunk. Come back to church. Come on, man. I can't remember that evangelist that got drunk after every service, but these congregations was made of church congregations, and, and I can't remember what's the problem. It's, it's some guy here in, in this era of time cycle, but he was a drunk. He was a total saturated alcoholic. But he preached the sermons. But the, the, the word tells you that God's word will not return void. Jimmy Swagger slept with a prostitute. Look at him. Oh, you listen, Jimmy Swagger. Oh, are you perfect? I'm telling you, it's time to have forgiveness in your heart. Amen. Forgiveness. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get drunk tonight after church. And I expect to have you all in the morning here Sunday morning here to be preached. How many of you be here? Two people. Oh, ye that are perfect and without sin, cast the first stone. No, I'm not going to get drunk. But see how far away from Christ we really are? See how our flesh dominates our thoughts, our opinions? That's right. If, if you sin, if you have sinned this week, how did you feel about it? Did anybody sin this week? How did you feel about it? Did it, did, was it good? Every time my flesh man's ever sinned, it's been good for my flesh. <laughs> but it's been terrible for my spirit, man, because it, it quickens on the inside of me. Hey, that's really dirty, that's really nasty. I'm going to you again this next time. You think Jimmy Swaggart's the only TV evangelist that's ever done wrong? No. But yet you listen to him? 
You think Jesse Franklin is such a holy man? You might need to research some of these mansions' lives. Right. You may need to see the $2 million mansion that they live in, five, $15 million mansions they live in, and they're beckoning the church on Social Security to give them their tithes and offerings. Send me in $200 and I'll give you this tape. Send me $100 and I'll give you this holy water. I don't agree with them having $15, $20 million. Nothing wrong with them prospering and being good health as long as their soul prospers now. But when we get to the point that the congregation is hungry and the preacher's got it all, we have a line with God. Amen. Amen. I probably live in a smaller less value house than 95% of you people live in. Amen? But that's my choice to live there, okay? I've had big fine homes. I've had big new homes. But we live in a house that was a crack house before we got it. It was a crack house. And it was right across the street from where I live. And I ended up there of my own choice. You're right where you chose to be, church. You're right where you want to be. You want to justify your attitudes so you don't have to give to Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Almost done. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the comforting of Caius. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was conformed in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Why would you love me if I get drunk tonight? Why would you turn away from me? Why would you throw me aside? I'm not worthy of you, am I? Why would you throw a person aside because they drink? You don't have to agree with them drinking, but what do you do at home? What do you do at home? Let me ask, let me ask the working class citizen this. How many of you sit around for an hour and never do no work on your job and get paid? What's the difference? What's the difference? That hurts that you wouldn't accept me next Sunday. Because I accept you after you sin. I love you all. I know you love me. You just want you just want to whip me, but you love me. I, I know you want to disengage me, but then you're going to answer to God. Verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and, 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 and spirit. spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Sermon's over. You're going to get on to do your normal things. All oh, your crock pots are timed and just right, and you're going to get to eat. You're going to get to go home and do this with this one. And you're going to get. But what about the blood of Jesus Christ perfecting the saints while you're sitting here? Well, if you know how to play that thing real soft, play it real soft. Amen. I want to tell you this morning in my heart that Jesus loves you. I want you to know he wants to save you this morning. And I want you to know those of you that are saved and you know you need cleansing, he wants to cleanse you this morning. I want you to know that he'll forgive you even though you wouldn't forgive me. He'll still forgive me because he loves me. If getting drunk was the worst sin I've ever done in my life, it would be nothing. Not that it's okay. I can't tell you drinking a beer is going to send you to hell. But I can tell you this. 
Christian, you stand up and drink a beer in front of a lost person, you've lost your testimony. Right. How many of you ever been sick and make a, make a hot toddy or whatever it is? I don't expect you to raise your hand up, but you have. How many of you poured a little liquor in the corn syrup or whatever and took a little bit of it, got under the covers and, and sweated till you broke the fever out? Amen. Amen. What if I didn't want to forgive you for that? What if God wouldn't forgive you for that? I'm telling you, we got a ways to go in forgiveness. If you cannot have the joy of the Lord that's, that's so full until you get to that point, you can forgive it. You can carry your integrity all you want to carry. But until you let God's integrity come out, you're walking in the flesh.
that you won't make it through. When you leave this walk of life, you have one more opportunity to do good for your family, for your friends, for your church, for your neighbors, for your spouses, or anybody else. I want you to know God loves you this morning. And He'll forgive you no matter what you've done. If you're worried about you blaspheming the Holy Ghost, forget it. You haven't, or you wouldn't have that spirit working on you right now. I'm telling you, God's in the house. And He just wants to cleanse us and give us a fresh start in our life. You're here this morning. I know you're here. And I know the devil's telling you it won't do any good. But I'm here to tell you it will do good. I'm here to tell you it'll give you strength. You'll be walking in mercy and you'll be walking in grace. For you was walking in lies and deceitfulness. You'll be walking in his love and in the world's anger and hatred. Amen. I'm telling you, God's here to touch you this morning. He's here to heal you. He's here to deliver you. Most of all, he's here to save you if you're lost. Lord, I just can't make it anymore. Lord, I can't hang on anymore. I'm ready to throw my towel in. I don't like doing this, church, because I don't like to drug out all of the time. But I'm going to do what the Spirit says. Lord, I, I'm at the end of my rope, and I just want to throw my hands up and run. I want to use this incident for an excuse that I may able to run and justify my actions. God's here to remove all of that today. You want to see your family go to heaven? You got to live a life in front of it that says, you know, I want what they have. I want whatever's on the inside of them. He said, come unto me, all you people lay and burn, and I'll give you rest. We'll go one more minute here. we're praying, do not hinder them. Let them pray as long as they want to pray. George, you don't know what my position I'm facing. You don't know what I go up against every day. I know. But I know I go up against Satan every day of my life. I know every day of my life he comes at me with something new. Something old. Some new desire. Some reason to hate. I want you to know God loves you this morning, brothers and sisters. And I, I pray that you take him with you when you leave these doors. You take him with you every step that you go and every conversation that you have. You let him be in it. device that, that, that manipulates us, that makes us do things we don't really want to do. Amen. The things I would not do, I do. Anybody got anything you want to say before we go home? Keep me in mind, first thing I got a new job. Amen. 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 
brother started a new job. He got a new steel rod in his leg and started.